Hey, Geometry. Happy Thursday. Here we are again. Um, I thought for sure I was going to be here today. Uh, my son yesterday saw his cough but didn't really run a fever. And today he's coughing and got 101 fever and really just doesn't sound like I'd want him to be in the classroom with you guys. So I don't think it's fair to send him to school with a fever and crazy cough to cough on everybody. So we're here. Uh, today's going to be a little bit less um, instruction based. It's going to be a little bit more review, but there is going to be a little bit of instruction. So I do want you guys to do a whole bunch of review kind of on your own. So what's going to happen is, at least for the beginning of this, like for right now, I want you to go to page 20. And I want you to try all of these problems. So do all nine of them here in a minute. So you're going to pause them. You're going to try to do the problems and then once you think you have them all done then you're going to turn the video on and you might end up like skipping through a little bit but i'm just going to run them through so if you don't know how to do them i'll show you but in about two seconds here pause it try the problems and then check your answers afterwards go for it all right so the interior angle sum assuming that you tried all these problems that would be b so that would be the sum of all the interior angles. The n minus two tells you the number of triangles, multiply by that by 180, and that would give you the number of total angles inside. If we only want one of them, then that's when we divide that answer by the number of sides or number of angles. So generally these formulas go this way, from the sum to the interior, one interior angle. The exterior angle sum is going all the way around the outside, and all the way around the outside is always 360 degrees, but you're just really going all the way around in one big circle. And then if I'm breaking that up into a bunch of external angles, four of them divided by four, and you end up getting your one exterior angle. All right, so some of you guys in the progress check wrote polygon as you counted up the number of sides and named it as like a decagon or something like that. But in this case, it's just, is it a polygon? And the answer is yes, because we have a closed shape with all straight sides. Um, is it concave, convex, or neither? This one would be concave because this is caved in. You can draw a little man in your cave. Is it regular, irregular, or neither? This one would definitely be irregular. So some of these angles are the same, but not all of them are the same. Some of the sides are the same, but not all sides are the same. So it's definitely irregular. For the next one, the sum of the interior angles is 2,700. So we'll use our sum of the interior angle formula, which is right here. So 180 times n minus 2 equals 2,700. So a lot of students were just dividing by 180 when they did the progress check. It's not exactly the same numbers, but if we take 2,700 divided by 180, that gives you the number of triangles, so 15, but it's n minus 2 equals 15. So a bunch of people told me on the progress check, I think that one was 900, a bunch of people told me it's Pentagon because it was 5. But you got to solve this. Don't forget it's n minus 2. Add the 2 over. So n equals 17. So what type of polygon is this? It would be a 17 gon. All right, for the next one, we want one interior angle or regular nonagon. So one interior angle would be this formula right here. So you got 180. It's n minus 2 over n. But for a nonagon, n is 9. So it's 180 times 9 minus 2 divided by 9. I think when we did this before, these numbers were flipped. It doesn't matter. It's number of triangles times the weight of a triangle. So 180 times seven divided by nine, or one, seven times 180, same deal. So 180 times seven, and then divide that by nine, gives us 140. All right, eight's the silly one. The sum of exterior angles is always 360. It does not matter how many sides you have. However, if one exterior angle is 45, that's one exterior, 360 divided by n. So if you're not sure about this, you put this over one and then you cross multiply. 
So 45n equals 360 times 1 divided by 45. Now, since this is the number of sides, if this doesn't come out to be a whole number, that's going to be kind of weird. So this would be 8, which means we have an octagon. All right, make sure you're showing all your work. I did grade those progress checks, put them in the grade book. I just have them with me. Um, I had more than one person that just kind of gave me numbers, which a lot of this you do in your calculator. I get that. Like this part right here is completely calculator. But if you show me that, if you don't show me what you're doing, I can't tell what that you're thinking. Your work is your brain process. You're trying to explain to me, you know what you're doing. Show me your work. All right, so we're going to do kind of the same thing again here. I want you to practice. So go to page 21 and 22. I want you to pause this 21 and 23. 21 and 23. And 23. What the heck is that? I think <laughs> well, this is page 22. That's kind of weird. All right, so anyway, I want you to try those two pages. It's like, did page 22 get like, I don't know, that's weird. So pause this, work these out. It should take you maybe about 20 minutes. I'm not going to run through the answers to these. If you have questions on them, I want you to star them. I can't imagine I'm not going to be here on uh, Monday, so I can go back over these later on. Whichever problems you're not sure about or you could not do, well, Check in with your neighbor because they might be able to help you out and then check your answers afterwards. Okay, so obviously don't just copy them down. This is practice. This is review. So take a minute, take about 20 minutes, try the next two pages, check your answers afterwards, and then resume the video. All right, so hopefully you did the practice. If you have not done the practice up above and you were waiting for a good time to pause, pause this and go back and do the practice now. But assuming you've done the practice and you checked your answers, and we'll continue on page 24. Okay, so I'm not gonna go too long because hopefully that took you a while to do the, the practice problems. Some of the faster people probably cruise through it, no big deal. But um, we're going to talk about the difference between a couple different parallelograms. We have three special parallelograms. So we have the rectangle and the square you guys know pretty well. So we'll start with the most familiar one, the square. And what makes something a square is you have all 90 degree angles and you have all congruent sides. So for a square, we have congruent sides and congruent angles. Now, for a rectangle, the big difference is we have all four congruent angles. But our sides aren't necessarily all congruent. Our opposite sides are congruent. Now, one thing you have to realize is... A, rect a square is a rectangle, okay? And the reason is, uh oh All right, a square is a rectangle because if you have all four sides congruent, you have opposite sides that are congruent. If you have all four angles congruent, then you have four angles congruent. So everything that makes something a square makes it a rectangle. A rectangle is not saying that these two have to be different. It's just saying that they can be different. The thing that makes something a rectangle is the 90 degree angles. All right, so our rectangle has all four angles that are congruent. That's the big part for that, because this is true of all parallelograms. Okay, the part that makes this specifically a rectangle is the fact that all four angles are congruent. Now, a square has both. It has all four sides congruent, and it has all four angles congruent, right? So what if the sides were all congruent, but the angles weren't? That's what you get when you have a rhombus. 
So rhombus has all four congruent sides. Which I was going with in blue. So rhombus is all four sides are congruent. Now the opposite angles are obviously congruent because this is a parallelogram. But that is not something that makes it special. The part that makes it special is all four congruent sides. Now, a couple things that we want to realize about all of these. So this one's an all, right? Opposite sides are congruent. That's true of the squares as well. But for all of these, our diagonals bisect. So for every single one of them, the diagonals bisect. The opposite sides are congruent. The um, same side interior angles are supplementary. Add up to 180. And that's still true of the squares because those two are going to add to 180. 90 plus 90 adds up to 180. So all of this stuff is going to be true for every single one. Opposite side congruent, opposite angles congruent. Um, so I'm going to add that to the purple list. So all that stuff that we just learned about our parallelograms do apply to rhombuses, rectangles, and squares. I really would be wearing my rhombus shirt today if I had come into work, um, but I am not there. All right, so a couple little, little uh, visuals here. So if you have a parallelogram, And you break it into this one would be a rhombus where all the sides are congruent. Or a rectangle where all the angles are congruent. You put those two together and you have all sides congruent, all angles congruent, and you get your square. Most of you, I think, know what a square means. But again, a rectangle does not necessarily mean that it can't be a square. And a square is a rectangle. So one thing that you kind of notice is these go the other way as well. A square is a rhombus because all four sides are congruent. A square is a rectangle because all four angles are congruent. I personally feel like the arrows are backwards on this picture. But if you have something that's both a rhombus and a rectangle, that will be a square. But a square automatically is a parallelogram, a rhombus, and a rectangle. So a square is all of those things. But you need both the rhombus and rectangle to be true at the same time in order for a shape to be a square. All right, we got a couple extra little rules, though, that are kind of cool for um, our diagonals. So diagonals always bisect each other. So they always bisect each other. But for our special ones, we have some special cases. So it's the diagonals of a rhombus. So look at them visibly and see if you can make a guess as to what's going to be true about them. They're not going to be the same size because this BD is definitely going to be longer than AC because of the way it's squished. But visibly, I'm hoping you can realize that these angles in the middle are always going to be 90 degrees. So the diagonals of, of the rhombus are perpendicular. If something is a rhombus, then the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors. So they both cut each other in half and they both are perpendicular to each other. So that's kind of cool. So just kind of mentioning everything that we know about a rhombus. So our opposite side, all of our sides are congruent. Our diagonals do bisect each other. Our opposite angles are congruent. But 
which is kind of cool. All right. So take a look at the diagonals of your rectangle and what looks like it's going to be true about them. It's not true about the rhombus. Now, they don't look like 90 now anymore, do they? This one looks obtuse and this one looks acute. And think if you stretch it even farther out, those two would not necessarily be the same. So the diagonals of rectangles are not perpendicular. They are congruent. So the whole one here and this one here, they're both the same. And they're bisectors. bisectors. So if something is a rectangle, then it's... Diagonals are congruent. And then if we know those things about our, our rhombus and our rectangle, the square is both. So the diagonals of the square are congruent, perpendicular, bisectors. All right, well, let's try to name our parallelograms. So name each parallelogram as specifically as possible. Okay, so it looks like a square, but I don't know that these two are the same. I do know that the opposite ones are the same because that is a property of parallelograms. I do know that all four angles are the same. And since all four angles are the same, this would be a rectangle. I know visibly it looks like the top and the right are the same, but we don't know that, so we can't assume that. All right, as far as the second one goes, um, you have all four sides are congruent. That would be our rhombus. Now, be careful. If it looks like a square, but you don't know that those are 90 degrees, you can't say it's a square or a rectangle. All right, for our third one, this would be another rhombus. That is one of the other properties of, of these. Now, we do know that it is a parallelogram, so all my opposite sides are going to be the same, so that helps, um, but this would be a rhombus. For our square, they're going to be perpendicular also, but I don't know enough about the sides. All right, so for the next few, we're going to solve this guy. So the rectangle KLMN, we know the angle K is that. LM is that. We want to find NK. All right, so the first thing that some of you are going to think to do is probably set these equal to each other because you get two equations, but one's an angle, one's a segment. So I can't do that. We could draw the picture out. So maybe let's do that really quick, but draw it small. Now, if I'm going to label this rectangle, it doesn't matter where I start, but I have to go in order. I can go clockwise or I can go counterclockwise. I should start at the first letter and go through my letters in order. So I know that K is 2x minus 10. And I know that LM is x minus 5. So, but don't forget that each of these angles in a rectangle is 90. So 2x minus 10 equals 90. Move over the 10, so 2x equals 100. Divide by 2, x equals 50. Now that we know what x is, I can plug this in. So 50 minus 5 is 45. And we're looking for nk, so they are the same because opposite sides of any parallelogram or rectangle they are congruent. All right, make sure you're pausing this and going, writing your stuff down. If you I haven't really given you many cues to pause, if you need to go back and rewind and, you know, fill in some of your notes, but make sure your notes are done. All right, why don't you try five and six 
pause them and then see if you can figure out the problems and then resume it and see if you're right. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw it out. So BC is 7x. CD is 5x plus 4. Oh, come on back. But since the rhombus, all of the sides are congruent. So we can set 7x equal to 5x plus 4. Move over the 5x. So 2x equals 4. And then x equals 2. And then make sure you're answering the question. A, B is this side here, but they're all the same for a rhombus. So I'm just going to plug this in here and get 14, which means this side's 14 and this side's also 14 and this side's also 14. So for rhombus, all of the sides are congruent. All right, last one. R, S, T, U, S, U is 6y and rt is y plus 5 which is hard to draw in that picture because kind of where they belong but it's both the diagonals now a square is a rectangle and one of the things that we know about rectangles is that the diagonals are congruent so we're going to set one diagonal, 6y equal to the other diagonal, y plus 5. And then we're just going to solve. So minus the y over, so 5y equals 5, y equals 1, and that's all we're looking for in this. All right, make sure that you fill in the rest of your notes correctly. If you've got to rewind this and go back to anything, go for it. But when you're done with that, you're going to try pages 26 and 27 and the answers, the selected answers, not all of them, are at the bottom. But hopefully some of the answers will help you figure out some of the other ones. Okay, so like for the first one you got just a ton of stuff. What I would suggest is that you start filling things in, like things that you want to remember about the rhombus is like, this is 90. It's gonna help you figure out this angle because you have a triangle here, right? And then this is 90. Once you know that one, you should be able to find that one. So things like that. Other things is they are bisected diagonals. So this is also five, this is four. These are all six. Kind of did most of that for you really fast. So with that being said, all those answers should be pretty easy to find. So you might have to go back to your, your notes real quick to remember those properties. But again, like if you don't remember the properties that the rhombuses diagonals are perpendicular, you're going to have a heck of a time finding any of the rest of these angles. All right. Good luck. And send me an email if you need any help with anything in particular, or if you want to try to meet with me next week, because I, I don't know how good you do over video notes. So. Good luck. You get the sub. Take your notes. Finish your homework.